work-life balance is crazy, right? It's crazy. We got to maintain that balance in our life so that we have sanity, so that we have good sleep, good food. We got to take care of ourselves, but we also are responsible, especially as a husband, as a father. Uh, you know, I have responsibilities. And so how do I maintain that balance with the daily vlog and editing and filming and you know, communicating with all of you. And so today I'm going to talk as best I can, knowing that I'm busy filming here on this work trip, but as best I can share my insights as to what I think about work-life balance and how I maintain that balance. Capiche? Capiche? Whew, all right, time to go run. We're back filming with red leaves. It's amazing. All right, back to the work-life balance discussion. Work-life balance. I'm wondering if we need to change the terms to priorities, priorities in our daily living. Instead of striving for a work-life balance, finding those layers of our ev everyday activities. You know, you go to the grocery store, not every day, but every week you go to the grocery store. So how do you, how are you efficient? That is one of my f most m favorite words in the world is efficient. How are you efficient at going to the grocery store, getting gas in your car, and checking the mail at the, at the post office? So I, as far as addressing this topic of uh, work-life balance, for me, I strive for efficiency in basically everything I do, and that's how I'm able to run every day. Now, sometimes it's at 8 p.m. at night, sometimes it's early in the morning, but um, sometimes it's on lunch break. But like, I think we need to find those layers where we can be efficient. So that's kind of the, the takeaway word from this little reflection. comes. Maybe. And another way to find those layers in life is to find things that you enjoy. Remember we talked about that yesterday. Like if you, if you find an activity that you're good at, follow that path. There's a reason you're good at that, 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 that task, that activity, whatever you enjoy doing. So for me, it's running. But as a family man, I have to think long term and say, okay, if I love running, how does my family integrate into running? So cheering me on at races, uh, dovetailing family vacations with running. Like that's, that's the overlap that I look for in different uh, tasks that I need to complete every single week. And so for me with running, like going up to Run Rabbit Run is an example and running up in the mountains, but I would, I would never go up there for three days without, without my family there. Does that make sense? Question of the day, question of the day. What do you guys do for that work-life balance? Or as I like to kind of think of it a little differently as priorities and layering life and making sure that there's overlap between work, between uh, my family, between true love, between my hobbies, AKA running. It's like the only hobby I really have. But like, what is your strategy? What do you, how do you approach work-life balance? How do you approach priorities in your life and I know this is like a big topic but um, if you have thoughts down below comment down below appreciate it appreciate it so I want to speak specifically to Will right now and any other endurance athlete for tips on how to basically manage life work family and trying to stay in shape trying to take care of your health through running, maybe it's cycling, but what I am slowly learning, Will, is that huh, like the 30 to 40 mile long run, getting ready for a 50K or a 50 miler is maybe overkill, like really. Um, now, everyone's endurance capabilities are different, everyone's bodies are different, but don't hesitate to keep your mileage a little lower 
aka saving time because you're busy and increasing the intensity by let's say 10 to 15 percent so instead of running 20 miles for a long run on saturday when your family's eating pancakes in their pajamas reduce that to 12 to 15 miles but increase the speed I think uh, I think you'll you'll see a difference in your your speed. So on race day, you'll be a little faster now, and frankly, your body will be able to hold up longer. So anyway, I'm slowly learning this, and um, that's a little tip for all the endurance athletes out there. I, um, as I'm talking to myself in the woods, people are walking by on their on their hike. Where? New location along the Mississippi, racing for the sun. Oh man, I gotta go. Hold on. Gotta get that golden hour. Gotta get that golden hour. the banks of the mighty Mississippi, uh, <laughs> we gotta learn to say no, you know? Will and all the endurance athletes, you know, like staying out late, going out to, you know, have a couple drinks, like every now and then that's okay, but rarely am I able to do that, especially with vlogging. Like, I'll just be honest, I, a lot of times I have to pass, and it's a little sad, but I think a lot of my friends know that I, I just, I, I have to, I have to do what I do in order, I have to sleep and I have to take care of myself and in order to do that, oh my gosh, there's an eagle, hold on. And so we just have to learn to say no in a gentle way, in a loving way, but you know, if you're waking up at 5 a.m. to go for a 35 or 40 minute run in order to, you know, eat breakfast and get ready for work so you can get to work by 8, like, you know, you can't be staying out at the bars till 11 p.m. Now, trust me, on the weekends, it's fun to have a little drink, get to hang out with people, relax, but, um, oh, it's hard. That's my little tidbit on the banks of the mighty Mississippi. Honestly, I'm reflecting a little bit today on work life. Woo! Balance. And, uh, Not today, YouTube, not today, we're not dying today.